1974, Dort Peninsula Winery was opened by two gentlemen. They had a couple of vats of wine downstairs in the cellar. We were small. We made only dry and sweet cherry wine and dry and sweet apple wine. Wine tasting did not take a real long time in those years. In 1984, my parents purchased the winery. My folks were really interested in wine, but never owned a winery before, never really made wine before. Instead of just apples and cherries, we started doing blackberries, we started doing raspberry, we started doing grape wine, started bringing some juices from California and producing the wines here. The winery just kept expanding and growing. In 1994, I came on board. And now, 24 years later, here I am, and the winery is uh, doubled in size 10 times in that amount of time. The schoolhouse was a two-room schoolhouse that had approximately 60 students in it. Grades first through eight went to school here. We did keep the original one-room schoolhouse structure, so when you walk in the front door, it still has the same features. They really did teach, you know, first grade through fourth on one side and, and the other grades on the other side. We still have people around that went to school here. We walked to Carlsville school in the uh, good weather. One year was especially memorable because that year the roads were all blocked and they still had a couple of sleigh buses drawn by horses stashed away and they took one of those out and took us to school. There's books and pictures of the old schoolhouse and the students. It's a really good local connection. You walk into the winery, the first thing you're going to see is the array of food products that we offer here. One of the staples is our oils. We have a wide variety of yummy oils and balsamics. We are proud to have homemade fudge. We have lots of different flavors and those are available for sampling every day. I was the winemaker here for a while and as time went on, to take the winery to another level, we needed to get somebody in here who really knew wine. We are in this really unique geographic area here in Door County and Door Peninsula and all along the lake, and it's an American viticulture area called the Wisconsin Ledge. The Wisconsin Ledge is home to many native grape varieties that you see growing everywhere. They really like our soil, they really like the climate that the lake provides for them, and what happens is that captures all these floral and fruit characteristics right in the, the grape itself, and it makes itself. By the time we're crushing the grapes and putting the yeast inside of it, we already know what it's gonna be in the back end. Door Peninsula from day one was using local resource fruit that was growing all around us, and that's what this facility was built for, and that's what it's, it's striving to do, is to take in as much of the local Wisconsin fruit as possible. We are Wisconsin's largest producer of wine from Wisconsin grown fruit. It's this local fruit that grows so well in this area. We bottle all of our wines right here in house. The wine will be pumped into our, our bottling machine where each one of the bottles will be filled up, filled under pressure so there's no oxygen allowed into that uh, system at all. Wine blends are really coming back, and they used to be the, the main way to make wine. It's just like when you're making food, you usually just don't use salt, and you just don't use water, just use bread. You combine things to build the, the product in front of you. We're always trying to get a style more than emphasize the grape, and that's a big part about blends. It's, it's trying to blend that grape to a style instead of uh, showcasing the actual grape itself. Blackberry Merlot is one of our oldest blends here at Thorpe Peninsula Winery and it's exactly what's in the namesake. It's, it came about because Merlot itself usually has a blackberry characteristic to it. It's a great wine because it both has the structure of a Merlot but the brightness of blackberry. Right away when the United States became a country, cider was the number one drink. Everyone was drinking cider because so we're rediscovering this product that we enjoyed. When we were starting to do the research on the cider and found out how they were making their cider and with what apples they were making them with, we found these old trees, specifically grown because of their ability to make great cider. I feel that we'd like to show you what we're doing, how we do it. It gives people a, a bond, it connects them. People really enjoy getting to know you, getting to know how you do it. We have a very sophisticated bottling operation. People can see how that's done. We have a very large expanded winemaking cellar now and uh, we go in there and we explain what's done in there and all the aging vats, very, very impressive. 
And then, of course, we end up uh, with going to the distillery now, too. That has been added in recent years. And um, then we end up here with, at the bar with our wine tasting. So it's really a nice uh, tour experience for people. On the distilling end, uh, Kyle Thomas has been, he worked in the wine department with us for a few years. Uh, we got into distilling and uh, thought it would be a good fit for him. We started with the, the white liquors, the vodkas, gin, cherry vodka, we could do some flavored vodkas. Our main goal was to get into the brown products, but all alcohol is actually clear, so you need to barrel age your products to get that color into that product. This distillery up here is basically our setup for whiskey production. And behind me over here, the little stainless tank, is our mash tun. And one of the first steps in the process is to fill the mash tun with water, and then I dump in a certain amount of grain, convert the starches in the grain to fermentable sugars by heating that up to a certain temperature for a certain amount of time. After that process is done, I need to run it through the tube and tube glycol chilling unit. That will chill the mash down so I can pump it into my fermentation tank. Then I can actually pitch my yeast when the temperature gets right in the mash. That'll ferment for about seven to 10 days. After that's done fermenting, I can rack the mash liquid off of the fermentation into the giant copper pot still that we see from Italy back behind me here. And that heats up the alcohol, evaporates it, condenses it, then I can capture it in the little stainless tote that's back here to go on to further processing with that product. We started distilling about 2000, late 2010, 2011. And in 2014, we won one of our biggest awards, which was a double gold medal for our gin in a San Francisco World Spirit Competition. Yeah, this is a high energy place to work, whether you're upstairs in the tasting room with all the people that are around or downstairs with all the, the moving parts, the pumps, the wines, the, the fermentation that's happening. There's always something happening at this winery. I think this is a shining star in our county. The employees here love what they do. They want to make sure that when people are up here and they're on vacation, that they're getting a great experience and they're, you know, they're up here to have fun and we want to make sure we're part of that. That's really why we've been so successful. I don't know, I tell people a lot that I'm living a dream. I'm around great people and, and it's an exciting business.